like me will say, no, you can't. You have already married this man. Stay with him. Because we could not tell him, divorce him. So she ran away till today. She told somebody later that she didn't want to come back to fellowship because we will advise her to marry that particular brother. And yet, if this brother takes you through mysteries, you will be shocked. <laughs> mysteries. Beware of mysteries. God is revealing things to us, beloved brethren. Praise the name of the Lord. Revelations, like I said, are very good. But make sure they are helping your life. I can testify to the fact that there are understandings of the scriptures that came to me and broke every chain. And I've been set free. Some of the deliverances I personally had were things that were done. I have had all kinds of revelations. I should share this because I will soon be rounding up. It was believed that me was a reincarnation of one of my uncles. They said I looked like him. That when he died, he died in the farm. He fell down from a palm tree. You know, and uh, he died. So when they were burying him, they said he would not climb palm trees in his next life. And uh, he won't go to the farm. And all of that. There was nothing they didn't say. <laughs> so... As a boy, I was not allowed. All my mates were climbing palm trees and cutting down palm fronts. I mean, palm fruit. I was not allowed to climb. I will sneak out and go and climb. They will. In fact, they told all my friends they should not allow me to climb. Brother Monday, they told him he should come and report. <laughs> so if I have caught climbing, Brother Monday will go and tell my mother that uh, see, we warned him he was climbing. So. <laughs> So I wasn't allowed to climb. And they, I said, okay, can they perform some rituals so I can start? In fact, to go to farm, they had to go and perform some rituals. Because if I plant anything, it will die. So I got born again, to cut the long story short. And I was ministering. I, was, I started preaching as soon as, a few months after I got born again, I was preaching. And I was ministering, devils will obey me. But I was in, that part of my life was like this. So I came into this way. I'm trying to tell you that uh, by the statements I made, I'm not belittling revelations. So I came into this way and I began to have clear understandings. Boy, and I started preaching against Babylon. Come out of her, my people. Then I started having a dream. In this dream, I would dream that I am in a small village and I'm sweeping around the palm tree. I'm sweeping. I will clean the place. It will be very neat. <laughs> I'll clean it up. When I come and sit down, I'll get up again and start cleaning it. It was clean. Nothing to sweep. I will, that was what I would do all night. Ah! So I went to, you know, our father in the Lord then, Pastor S.G. Elton. So I told him. He looked at me and said, and in fact, he went on ahead and told me this story. He said, they, 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 have, they believe in reincarnation in your place. I said, yes, they do. He said, okay. He mentioned the name of the town around my village. I said, that's where I'm from. He said, yeah, that he's been there. When he was with the apostolic church, he used to go to those places to preach. That he knows about, that this thing is very strong there. He said, okay, I, there is that, that's, it's a bondage. You've never broken this, and uh, it will ruin you. So he sat down in one little chair. There's this little chair he sits on. He will sit on it like that. Then he has another small chair in front of him. Those of us who have visited him knows. You put your two legs in his leg like this. Took a, strong, a very strict look at my forehead and said, he didn't say anything. He just did his hand, shook his hand like that. And he took a stern look again. And he said, you are free. Go home. From that day till today, I never had that dream again. Even when I set my mind on it oh, and go to sleep, I don't dream it. 
And, that's, and do you know what? If everybody is planting things, it is dying. If I plant, it will germinate. If I plant something on a rock, it will grow. And this is me who was not allowed to go to farm. Praise the name of the Lamb of God. Now, it is important, you know, it, it was, I had all the revelations, but brethren, it didn't help me. It took a simple word of the Lord. In my name, they shall cast out devils. That bondage broke without reading a Bible passage. But by a man who has known and had God revealed to him. Beloved brethren, I'm saying this so that we They say, don't do this, uh, Abba. It's the Bible's Bible. Let's take God out of this. Beloved brethren, never take the word of God out of anything. Otherwise, you are exposed. When the word of God does not, you don't tremble. The word of God does not make you afraid. If somebody reminds you of the word of God when you are going to commit a crime, you say, let's, let's take God. Let's put God aside where this is business. Excuse me. You are running yourself into trouble. It's a sign, anyway, that the glory has departed. Because anyone who is surrounded by the glory of God will take the word of God as the instrument for living and will tremble at the word of God. There are many things I could do, but when I remember the word of God talks against it, I will restrict, restrain myself. I will need a further dream or a revelation about it if I can see that the word of the Lord says, don't, that is enough. Hallelujah. He does I got up and said, what are you doing? What is the secret? Praise the name of the Lamb of God. You must tremble at the word of God. If you don't fear the word of God, when the chips are down, you have no platform on which to operate. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Number six, when we no longer fear God, and he seems to be very far away is a sign that is an evidence that the glory of God has departed from you. How many of us are in that state? We are the things of God. You used to, when the, there are scriptures, I remember the, a, 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 a brother, when he's watching Jesus of Nazareth, when he gets to the point where they nailed him, they were nailing him to the cross, he will run away and go and, be, and lie down inside and cry. Everybody, in fact, we'll have to stop showing the film. Because he's crying. Say, my Lord suffered for me like this. Now, you now come to a point where you can watch them nailing him and you say, <laughs> ah, these people, oh, just see the nails. That nail ah, is pointed, though. Big one. And you are cracking jokes with it. You think it's comedy. When, you're, when you come to no more fear of God, God seems very far away. If you have come to that point, it is because the glory has left or has receded from you so much that you have to come back and run up to catch up with the glory of God again. It is by crying out and asking for God's help. There were many things that you will do before now. Before you raise your hand, you are in the spirit. But now you can fast for seven days and seven nights. You can't even enter the realm of the spirit. Something is wrong. The glory of God has left. Many things that you used to just do with it spiritually. Now, you used to be able to talk to somebody about Jesus Christ. You give them a track. You tell them Jesus loves you. He cares for you. And now, when you look at the person, your heart is beating. Supposing he says that you religious fanatic. I don't want them to call me names. So you keep the track with you. That's if you and then at some point, you don't even want to carry track with you at all. So that there's no temptation to give it to anybody. I'm just using these as examples. Of things that used to be so easy with you. But no more reverence for God. May God help us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 3 verse 18, quickly display it. Hallelujah. Romans 3 18. 
There is no fear of God before their eyes. Brethren, do you fear God? I was talking to a young man. He was being very treacherous against his wife. He was making plans to ditch his wife. And he would come to church and be praising God and dancing very well. No fear of God. I said, you are lucky that God did not kill you. And many of us are taking advantage of the fact that because God hasn't killed you, you think, uh, no, 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 he doesn't, he doesn't care. He's not like that. May God help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. James chapter 4 verse 8. I want to quickly read that. James chapter 4 at verse 8. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Draw nigh to God and it will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Verse 9. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. For your, let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall what? Lift you up. And we say amen. All right, we will leave the rest. If you go to Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 28, the same thing. But let me quickly look at this word, the glory has departed, Ichabod. In 1 Samuel chapter 4, at verse 21, you know, we have the word Ichabod used. The word means glory has departed. Kabod is glory. When you say Ichabod, it means no glory. The glory is gone. And uh, the wife of one of the sons of Eli heard that his father, her father-in-law had died. And she heard that the ark was taken. She heard that her husband died. Ah, she fell into labor and gave birth to a child, a, a, a male child. And the people said, oh, you should rejoice. At least this is also of joy for you. He said, no, the glory has departed. He named the child Ichabod. I hope somebody changed that child's name because that was a very bad one. Praise the Lord. Now, how do we, the people get the state of Ichabod created around them? For much of the church, the glory has departed and people are paying good money for doves' dogs. Now, I wonder, because of this, I wonder, the Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6. Okay. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold, now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, to Jordan. Um, I want the place where he said uh, dove, things were very tough in Israel. I think it's probably much down. This is verse 25. No, this is verse 2. I, I want 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 25. Uh -huh. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it until an ass's head, like goat head, was sold for 80 pieces of silver. I went to look for, to try to convert that money. It was about for goat head, the head of a goat. You wonder how many goats that can buy for you around here. Eh? But that was <laughs> then. So you can imagine what it will look like today. 80 pieces of silver. And a fourth part of a cab. A cab is 1.5 liter mudu. You know mudu they use for measuring things in the market. One that is, this, the small one, that is 1.5 liters in capacity, was selling for, of dove's dung, the poo of dove, was selling for five pieces of silver. Praise the name of the Lord. Five pieces of silver. That was going by then for over 40,000 naira. Okay, the question I was asking is, what did they want to do with the poo of, of doves? <laughs> What did they really want to eat, do with it? There was famine. There was nothing else to eat. So nothing was wasted. So because the digestive system of those is very, you know, it's not very 
good. What I mean by not good, the dove requires only a small amount to exist. So much of it, the thing it takes in are passed out whole. They will swallow grain. It's whole. So people were going to look for doves. Doves poo. They will take it, come and wash out, get some of the grains, and they will go and cook. Now, think of how bad things were, but look at the spiritual implication. In Matthew chapter 3, the Bible said Jesus Christ, when he was baptized, was praying, and the heavens were opened, and the Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove. So the dove is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Now, like somebody said, that the dove flew away. Ichabod. The dove left. All that was left was the pool of dove. And people, church people, are paying good money for the pool of dove. And they are eating it and rejoicing. Much of the teachings that you have around in many churches today, apart from they being vomit on the tables, the best of them are dove's pool. That is what the Holy Ghost would describe them with. That is how God sees it. The poo of those things that are not meant to be eaten. Men are paying good money for it. You go into churches, they say all manner of things. Now, very soon, they will tell you, I have seen many of them, it's not very soon. They say adultery, somebody said divorce is not a, it's not a crime, it's not a sin. That you can divorce. And that divorce is not bad. That the Bible is not against divorce. I said, has this person ever read Malachi chapter 2, from verse 16, that God hates divorce? Something that the Bible clearly says that God hates. Just because you are passing through, maybe they have been divorced by themselves. And now, rather than repent, they are trying to justify it. That's dove's poo. And that's what they are selling. And people will buy it. And start, you hear divorce all over the church. A man of God will go on. Today I was watching a clip. Was it today? I think it was yesterday. I was watching a clip that said that homosexuality is not a sin. It's not, God is not against it. That God is not against homosexuality. And he tried to paint it in such a way that it will really be acceptable to everybody. They look at you. First and foremost, that is a terrible sin. Something that grieved God so much that he destroyed two cities. Till today, there's no trace of those two cities. God never allowed even the land they were built on to be inhabited. They are fighting over the land in uh, Judea, in Israel. Nobody is wanting to go near the area of Sodom and Gomorrah. And somebody, a preacher, that many people, some of you here are following him. He's telling people that, uh, you know, on another occasion he said that uh, Mary did not give birth to Jesus Christ. Same human being. We have those poo all over the place. There is famine in the land, the family of the word of God, the glory has the and men and women are eating, busy eating dove's poo, dove's dung. Those who are wealthy enough will have enough money to buy the ass's head. Oh, those are the wealthy ones. How much meat do you have in an ass's head? I hear people talking about goat head. Goat head. Ah, goat head. I decided to try it one day. <laughs> After, from that day till today, I never bought another Ishewu. I would rather buy the leg and the tie and eat it. Do you get what I'm saying? But it's a delicacy to many. When the glory has departed, many things that are abominable becomes delicacies. And as his head was selling for 80 pieces of silver. And that amounts to what is happening today because the glory has departed. Much of the church is going after this and we are, it is just starting. We are going to have more of it. There will be many more of that. They will come. Oh, yes. There will be so much of it going on. Many people are derailing. There is a, a falling away going on. 
Many people are falling away into false doctrines, into doctrines of devils, into things that will not help their faith. Whereas the fullness of the Christ is very near, very near. And some people's attention will be taken into something that is not useful, that is not needful. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May you not be among those eating dove's dung. Don't waste your money on dove's dung. It is useless. Some of the steps that lead to Ichabod, I will just go through this. Bracola shared on it much. Number one is sin. When you sin, the glory departs. Where there is sin or compromises, both in leadership and in the lead, the glory will depart. Number two, divisions and offenses. An unforgiving spirit, especially in leadership. When people don't know how to disagree and become friends after, the glory will depart very quickly. And you'll be, you can be struggling and talking and boasting. Nothing is happening. May God help us. Number three, when we speak critically against leadership, especially in the presence of children, many youths are going astray and the parents are responsible for it, largely. Maybe not totally, but I can assure you I know what I'm saying. Largely responsible for it. You just find a situation from nowhere where young people who were born inside the house of God, who were dedicated in church, just suddenly take off and become devious. Parents should check themselves. Because when you come and you are picking faults with the church, picking fault with brother so-and-so, picking fault with sister so-and-so, and the children are listening, let me tell you, our children respect us a lot. They respect our words. You may say it and you think you are setting, you want the children to learn from it. They don't learn from it. They grow up hating that person. Even if they don't hate that person, they just grow up formulating their own ideas. They say, see, my mom and my dad, they are, were into this thing all their lives. See where it led them. They are into this. He is not even happy or she is not even happy. And now, with, I, I, look, look, look. I, let me just live my life. Sometimes when we are, that's why any time I had to take part in praying for a child, a youth that is not in the faith, first thing I do is to repent on my behalf, on the behalf of the parents, and on behalf of the congregation. There are some things we do, may not even be the parents. When children are watching us, one day we were in Calabar Conference. Listen to this attentively. In Calabar Conference, and you know, our children were just, we'll pack everybody in the bus. Abuja went with a full bus, or you know, two bus itself. I don't remember now. When we got there, it was time for breakfast, and the children went and queued in one line. Adults on one line, they were queuing. For some reason, I don't know what happened. They started fighting. The adults went and took the food. Somebody carried the tag, the receipt, and poured it inside the stew. And then that one carried the stew and poured it on. They were fighting. They were messing up the place. They pushed the children away. I remember my son ran to me. He said, Daddy, they are fighting. Oh, they were even pushing children. <laughs> the way he was saying it, you would think he was an adult. They were even pushing the children. Hey, how, why should they be fighting? Others were in one place. Hey, fire on the mountain. Run, 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 run. Now, it has to take us time to wash that thing off the memory of some children. From that kind of action in the house. When two adults decide to quarrel in the presence of little children, what do you expect? Those children formulate ideas. And so when they are at the age to make their own decisions, you never can tell what decisions they will make. And so in order to do this, let us stop being critical of the church where we are. I normally say that we are the only pastors in the world that tell people our church is not good, don't come. It's only in the house fellowship you have that. Because we complain and tell everybody, are you dead? They dead do what? Don't mind them. 
<laughs> and we have had casualties because of that. May God help us. May God help us. So many children get exposed to the devil because we speak ill of fellow leaders or fellow brethren in their presence. This amounts to a lack of discernment of the body and it causes the glory to depart, exposing the house to satanic prowls. The devil just prowls around and can come in and play games with our children that are so precious to us. We must be very careful not to allow this kind of thing to happen. 1 Corinthians 11, 29, you know, says a lot. Brother Kola spoke a lot about that yesterday. Number four, when we refuse to correct or discipline our children according to the word of God, Proverbs 2, 6, uh, Proverbs 22, verse 6 and verse 15, Proverbs 23, verse 13 to 14, Proverbs 29, verse 15. Please, beloved brethren, we expose children to a departing glory when we do not discipline them. Brother Carlos also spoke about this yesterday, but I just want to add this to that. See, don't be afraid to discipline your children. Like he said yesterday, if you don't discipline them now, you will cry later on in your old age. Discipline them. My opinion, and I believe it is based on the word of God as well. See, take a cane. Tell a child, don't do this. He does it to see what you will do. Uh, don't do this. The second time, the third time, don't use mouth. Take a cane. Flog the child very well. They will remember it for a very long time. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says, don't be afraid. Don't spare the rod. You will spoil the child. Praise the name of the Lord. A youth I know, I don't want to call his name, became a father. Oh, you say, no, 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 don't tell, don't tell him not to, just tell him the good part. Don't, don't tell him the negative part. I say, really? I say, okay. So we left it. <laughs> I saw that youth, you know, a few weeks back, he told me, spanked the hell out of his little boy. I said, now we are talking. I said, but why? He said, he just wouldn't hear. I'm telling him only the positive things. He thinks I'm joking. <laughs> I said, this is, is a lesson for you. You see, psychology and Montessori has a lot of weird ideas. Don't buy them. Do what the word of God says. He said, if you, spoil, if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. A rod of his cane will drive it out. Praise the name of the Lord. So, you, when, by the time you try to interpret it into something else, it becomes like, don't stand in one corner and face the wall. The child will face the wall. And you don't know what he's thinking while he's facing the wall. And if you are a careless parent, you probably have a handset. <laughs> and he's watching YouTube while he's serving his punishment. Those things, have, they are devising all manner of things. The word of God is still the best. Amen? I know those of who may, be, who may watch this who are in the West, I understand their predicament. The government can take your children from you if you spank them and any sign shows. They even question them, they query them. But I tell you, we also have some of our brethren over there who are disciplined their children. One of our daughters, daughter was misery response. Why? Foolishness was knocked out of their heads when they were trying to be stupid to the system under which they lived. See, beloved brethren, there are always... We are not saying, just like it was put to us yesterday, I'm not saying you should become a terror to your children. No, that is not being a terror. Praise the name of the Lord. Anyway, when, number five, when we propagate another gospel in our assemblies, we are calling for a cupboard. When we propagate another gospel, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4, tells us the proper gospel. Galatians chapter 15, talks about another gospel, a gospel that wants you to, you know, limit yourself to the, you know, commandments, to do's and don'ts, and all of that. 
I hear I have gone to listen to kingdom mentality. I have watched so many YouTube what they call kingdom mentality. Christians don't have kingdom mentality. Go and find out what they be, what they call kingdom mentality. It's expansionism, where you can create wealth, get the wealth, and there's nothing wrong with creating wealth, but don't just call it kingdom message. Praise the name of the Lord. Create wealth by all means. Make it even generational. But well, that's not what kingdom mentality means, according to scriptures. When the Lord said, say the kingdom of God is at hand, repent ye and believe the good news. He meant the following. Number one, this is the pure gospel. To go and propagate. Which we have replaced with something else that is now making Ichabod. Number one, that Jesus died for us on the cross. Number two, that he was buried. Amen? Number three, that he resurrected. Number four, that he ascended to heaven and sat at the right hand of God. Number five, that he's coming back again. That's the gospel. Expand these five things. You have the gospel of the kingdom. Any other thing you try to do to embellish it, if you are not careful, you will be preaching another gospel. So let us preach the right gospel in our assemblies. In many, the proper gospel has never been preached for a long while. Number six, when we dishonor and grieve the Holy Spirit, when we dishonor and grieve the Holy Spirit, Psalm 78, verse um, 40 upwards and Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 when you grieve the spirit of the living God through idolatry and through flattery we flatter God a lot oh all that the Lord has spoken we do father you are the great God the great king we sing much of the worship songs we sing in the name of praising God you know have you listened to this one on YouTube Nobody say I did craze. Now God I did serve. Oh, nobody say I did craze. And they will be dancing and doing all kinds of things. So the truth is that they are crazy. They are not worshipping God. Praise the name of the Lord. Because that has become the mentality of the Pentecostal you know, platform. Anything goes. You can do anything. So you can dress anyhow. I remembered once that, uh, <laughs> you know, in Faith Arena, we had just moved to Faith Arena then in Benin, and they were doing a musical concert. And somebody came in with baggy, if you see the big jeans he wore, baggy jeans, and put it, they were not even doing sagging then, but somebody was already doing sagging, put it here, and wore one something that had only, it was like a, a, a waistcoat. But it was jeans also. No singlet, nothing. His chest was all bare. And he came in and was banging his bass guitar with her and using his skill. He was very skillful with the bass guitar. He came out doing that. I also got up. I went to them and said, hey, hey, come sit down. He said, we should remember that this is the house of God. <laughs> I, I laughed that day. I said, at least somebody should say something to these people. See, you can't do it. It's now in vogue. It's now in vogue eh, to carry dada hair. They've given it a very nice looking name, dreadlocks. Go and do. In the early 80s, when we catch you with dreadlocks, we minister deliverance to you. We take a scissors and cut the hair right there and then. And there were spirits behind it. There were some children, if you cut the hair, they would die. You start raising the dead. Now, the devil found a way to make it acceptable. And now it's a style. Christians, ministers of the gospel are doing it. They tie it and then make their hair like women's hair. And then come on the platform. The glory has departed. I think one of the reasons God has held back is that if the Lord were to come in, there will be dead bodies everywhere. Because of God, the glory of God judges when he appears. Brethren, these are some of the things we dishonoring the Holy Ghost, grieving the Holy Ghost. 
things that people should be afraid of. I told you the test, my own testimony. I had big hair when I came into Nigeria from the US. I was carrying my big hair and I was really very proud of it. And I wanted to preach. I would go carry tracks and I would preach everywhere. But I couldn't win the soul. So I see some of the young people say, you didn't know I had it. With some of us used to carry those. We also did, you know, all of those things that you think we don't understand today. We did it. Praise the name of the Lord. I preached one week, no, no, no soul won. Second week, when I am preaching to them, instead of listening to me, they'll be looking at my hair. Ha -ha. So one day, I was preaching on the street. First group of boys I met were admiring my hair rather than listening to what I was saying. Second group the same. Third group the same. I said, I've had it. I left that place and went to the barber shop. I said, cut everything off. Ah, it was paining the barber young man more than me who came to cut my hair. He said, ah, so, but you can't cut this thing now. Will you? This fine hair, you want to cut it? I said, it's not fine. Cut it. We had the He refused to cut my hair. I will go to another place. He said, no, we say I don't want cut up. It took you time to grow this thing like this. Now you want cut up? I said, yes, cut it. You don't understand. Cut it. So he said, okay, I will just cut it. I will shape it so that it will be nice. I said, I didn't come here to make it look nice. Cut it. When they cut my hair, when you pack it, it will, you will do it like this. It was pl as plenty as that. Following day, I went to preach. I won souls, many people at the same time. Everywhere I go to preach, they will listen to my words rather than what my hair looked like. So, look, there's nothing you're carrying that is so cute that cannot be offered to God. Praise the name of the Lamb of God. Don't fall for the spirits of this age. Much of what they are doing dishonors God. How do you sew your cloth and deliberately expose parts of your body? For the young ladies, what are you looking for? Oh, I understand why it's heat. There is heat. That's why you are exposing some parts of your body so that you won't sweat. Is that the real reason? It's fashion. You are too timid to refuse the world and tell the world, I won't do your thing. I would rather do what I know will please God. That's the truth. And I want to say this, beloved brethren, if the word of God tells you a thing, do it. Prefer it to any other thing. Amen. Don't dishonor. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. When you grieve the Holy Spirit, he leaves. He departs. Now, how do we bring back the glory? I will round up here. Number one, Brother Kola also mentioned some of this. Listen to that message. Repentance. Repent from sins, from dead works, from, I mean, carry out restitutions and restorations. First works, the things you knew when you became a Christian, you used to do them. Go and do them again. Number two, follow the due order. In First Chronicles chapter 15, David had earlier wanted to bring the ark of God into the house. And uh, when he brought the ark on a cart, the way the Philistines would carry it, God killed people. Ah, David went back. He was afraid of God. But look at what the king did. He carried this killing machine. I went to give one elder and said, I need to stay in your house. He cannot say, no, I'm not carrying. So he stayed in his house. I don't know whether they expected the ark to kill Obededon's household. <laughs> but the ark blessed Obededon. Obededon's household got blessed. And when that happened, if you, about three months, they told David that Obededon's household is being blessed. So he said, what? Ah, no, we have to find a way. What do we do to bring the to Obededon's house? Let's bring it here. Do you know if that happened in our midst today, it will create an enmity. Say, you hate me. First of all, you gave me this thing, thinking it will kill me. Now, I am being blessed. You won't carry on. We, <laughs> we will do an enmity. Ah, free of charge. We will do an enmity. And malign each other. 
God help his house. From today, it will never be so again. Amen. If a brother have made, say something or does something about you, it's not every time he has bad intentions. It may not go down well with you, but he does not hate you. He doesn't have bad intentions. For all you care, that may even be good for you. Praise the name of the Lord. The due order, the act must be borne upon the shoulders of men. It's not meant to be carried on a cart. The glory of God is not to be carried upon concerts. Hey, let's bring concert. We we'll just do a musical concert. Oh, revival will break out. Go and do all of them. When you've gone around the nation, come back and let's talk. Those are not what brings the glory of God. I'm not saying to do a musical choir gathering to sing and bless people is a sin. No, that's not what I've said. But beware that you are expecting to use that to bring the glory to God, glory to church. And by the way, God is grieved at some of the things they are doing. So we need to maintain the due order. The act must be borne upon the shoulders of sanctified men who are dedicated to God, who are living lives free from sin. You see why we call on the youths and the rest of leadership everywhere to live clean and straightforward lives. The due order, plurality of leadership and so on. We won't have time to go into all that, but the due order must be in place if the glory is to return. If the Lord will not find men who are ready to make the sacrifice to bring back the glory, he won't come. But may he find, after this conference, may he find in our assemblies, in our lives, a place for his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 11. Number three, thing we must do by prayer and by fasting. Brethren, there is no place, no shortcut. You want to bring the glory of God down, prayer and fasting is inevitable. You must pray, you must fast. Go and read history. There has been no single man of God who got into a high estate in revealing the glory of God that did not fast and pray. Some of them fasted for years. Some of them fasted for... Kennedy said they were fasting and praying for about two years before the latter rain revival broke out. Two years. So why do you think today you eat a full stomach? Oh, it's not by fasting and prayers. Very good. Tell me by what it is done. And I will, you will show me where you have proved it. And then I can follow you. But if history is what it says, I know that prayer and fasting are, you can't underestimate them. You cannot lay them aside and make any meaningful progress. Amen. Number four, by unwavering obedience to the word of God, you must be willing to obey God's word in your life. Many of us, Many things are not moving because of simple disobedience. God said, don't do this again. And you keep doing it and you expect things to change. Repent and obey the word of God. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Number five, consistency in seeking the enforcement of our covenant rights. Be consistent in seeking the enforcement of your covenant rights. One of the things that has always brought God back to David, or that always brought God back to David, was covenant. He remembers his covenant with David. He remembers his covenant with Abraham. Amen. Then number six, possessing an attitude of thanksgiving, praise, and worship. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21 through 24. Praising God. Being thankful all the time. Blessed be God forever. And then last but not the least, number seven, let the Lord have his way in us. He is in charge of the command module. He is the captain of the hosts. He is the leading one in this warfare. Give him that place. Give him that place. He is the one who will bring things to pass. Blessed be God forever. 
Joshua chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. He said, I come as the captain of the Lord's hosts. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 and 16. This last point I gave, and I round up with this, is, was enforced to me by Revelation, which I think I shared here once. We were in a meeting and I entered into this experience in a dream. It was a dream. And in this dream, we had gone to the presence of God to receive something. I was not allowed to see how we went, but I know we went. A number of the people in primary leadership of this work were there. And the Lord gave us a whole lot of things. He said, by this, the work that I have commissioned you to do will be done. You have everything you require. And we were very happy. We were joyous. And we were returning back to earth. And we were in this vessel. It was like a balloon, but it wasn't a balloon. I am, I've seen an air balloon. I know what they look like. It wasn't a balloon, but it looked like one. The only, the only difference was that we were inside this one. Inside the complete cycle. There is no place open where air can enter or anything. So it was a, more like a capsule, but looked like a balloon. It was so big. It was as big as the planet Earth itself. And that was the size of what we required to carry the things, giftings that we were given. So we were coming. At some point, very close to the planet, I could see the planet. The way you will see them when they went to the moon, they'll be looking at planet Earth. I was looking at it. And I said, oh, we are getting near home. I was very excited. So we re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. And when we re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, the speed, the thing sped up. Hey, I was not concerned. I was not talking to another brother. I said, see you. We have to find, how do we slow this thing down? We are not in the command module. So we don't even, there's no, com, no button, nothing to press. We're just like passengers in it. And yet it's running so fast, we need to slow it down. At this rate, if we crash land, every, my concern was all the things we are given to give to the people of the earth. How do we give these things? They are going to be destroyed or damaged. Hey, how, I was so concerned. So the brother and myself were looking for, how do we slow this down? We were having that concern when all of a sudden the capsule slowed down and tore down like a little feather. And we came down and we were ecstatic with joy. The earth is finally saved. We, are, we, are, we were rejoicing and very happy. When I woke up from it, a certain, some thoughts came to my mind. Number one, don't try to take charge of this work. The Lord is the commander. He is the one in charge. In fact, that was where he emphasized to my spirit that you are not the one going to war. I am the one going to war. I am the captain of the Lord's host. I am the one that will do the fighting. You come after me and take the spoils. Praise the name of the Lamb of God. That should boost our faith, knowing that God will do the works. In the days of the Lord Jesus Christ, it was the Father doing the works. He said, as I hear, I do. And as I see, I follow and I do. It is not me, it is my Father that is doing the works. Beloved brethren, there's a whole lot that God has given to us to do. When the glory of God comes upon us, as we have described today, things will become easy. We will walk into communities that will receive Christ. We will move into hospitals. People will get up and be healed completely. The mighty moves and demonstration of the power of God we have looked for will be seen. Men will traverse nations without this has anything to go and carry out ministries and come back. Even in the old Pentecostal order, men did it. Not to talk of this time that the Lord will be in charge of the work himself. At this time that we are about entering the promised land, the Lord is saying to us, he has come to take charge. Will you let him? Will we let him? Yes, we will let him take control. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's rise to our feet. It has been long, but 
I want us to take time and look through these messages again and do the things you are expected to do. Beloved brethren, it is time to begin to look away from yourself and look to God and to God alone. He is the one in charge. Blessed be God forever and ever. Hallelujah. 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 Let us take this last song again we took at the beginning. Your glory covers the heavens, Lord. Your glory covers the heavens. Your glory covers the heavens. And earth is filled with your glory. Amen. Your glory covers the heavens. Your glory covers the heavens. Amen. Your glory covers the heavens. And the earth is full of your praise. Your glory covers the heavens. Amen. discovers that from all that has been said so far it appears the glory of God is far from where you are things that you used to do for God spiritual things you used to do with a lot of ease are no longer easy these days in fact you can set out to meditate and your thought goes everywhere you can set out you've made promises to god that you broke that, that is a sin hmm? amounting to flattering god you flatter him tell him how good he is how mighty he is how that you are going to serve him but when the chips are down you are not doing it as many of us as find ourselves in this state I want us to come forward for the conference i'm sure there is a space in front if you are hearing us still are they still connected let all who find themselves glory are the things that should not be in your life are happening free of charge i want you to just move from where you are to the front and say god let your glory return let your glory return
let your glory come i am tired of making my own efforts i have tried i'm trying to do it my own way but it just isn't working let your glory come i have heard about your glory and i love your glory i want your glory in my life at this point in time. hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord as you come beloved brethren i want you to just begin to pray we find things we want to do but there's just no strength to do them You now is a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. For you, it's a struggle. You are wondering, really, how do they really do this? All things have passed away. What does it mean? How does all things pass away? My own are still very much with me. Beloved brethren, when the glory departs, we fight but when the glory returns there is no sweat we do not sweat the priesthood the bible says they will not wear anything that causes sweat any garment that causes sweat they are not to wear them When the glory of God comes into your life today, you will not sweat. You will enter into the things you want to do. Once God reveals them to you, you find yourself walking into them. Don't make excuse for your job. Oh, it's because of my job. I want you to continue on to pray as I state this. You make excuse, oh, it's because of my work. Brother Lawrence was working in a restaurant and could pray as if he was in a retreat alone with God. It is possible to pray. Let's even look at the times available to you that you are not utilizing. From henceforth, you will not sweat. You will have more than enough time. I want you to lift your voice and talk to God. Crave his glory. Tell him, Lord, let your glory return unto me. Let your glory come unto me. Let your glory return. Come into my life in the fullness of your glory. He called us to show forth the glory of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. How can I show forth glory that I do not have? Yes, I'm born again. My spirit man is full of the glory of God. How much of that glory is pouring into my soul? How much of that glory is influencing my decisions on a daily basis? That glory is influencing my tongue, my mouth, when I talk. How much of that glory is influencing my thoughts, my mind, my soul? We pray the glory of the Lord come down. Let the glory of the Lord come down upon us. Let the glory of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the glory of the Lord come down upon my life. Let the glory
in Jesus name I want to pray for you Heavenly Father I give you thanks for every one of your children that is here outside kneeling down or standing I thank you for the grace and the help you have given them to so far recognize the need to have your presence and your glory Lord, let your glory return to each and every one of these lives. I pray that the blood of Jesus will avail for everyone whatever was done that caused the glory or to depart let the blood of Jesus answer for it and atone for everyone. By the blood of Jesus, we receive afresh for every one of you the righteousness of God. Amen. From henceforth, He is Jehovah, your righteousness. Jehovah Sikenu, the Lord, your righteousness. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Therefore, by the presence of in your life let his glory in the fullness of him come upon your life now in Jesus name we rebuke this Ichabod you found spirit of Ichabod that will not allow the people to carry the glory of God for long we change your name we change you and uproot you from their lives this name of Ichabod you foisted upon any one of them I command it to be undone in Jesus Christ's name Amen. the Lord cause his glory to come upon you reside in you abide in you in the name of Jesus by reason of the glory of God thank you Lord by reason of the glory of God you will be valiant in battle. Amen. You will be valiant in warfare. Amen. Because the Lord God fights for you. Amen. You will overcome. Amen. You will walk in victory. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. I declare that the strength of the Lord will be with you. Amen. By reason of his glory. His presence shall surround you. His glory shall rest upon you your environment shall become impenetrable to the forces of darkness from henceforth so that you can be at liberty to fulfill your promises and your covenants to God in the name of Jesus Christ for those who are watching in the audience in Bauchi and those who may watch this online I declare that the condition of Ichabod is erased from your life let the Lord return unto you. Let the Lord return unto you. Let the Lord return in fullness of his presence and glory upon your life from now in Jesus Christ's name. I declare that the cause of this glory upon you, you shall go forth. You will show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. From now, the lifting up of your hands will be as the evening sacrifice, acceptable and to God and honored by him. Therefore, when you lift your hand in prayers and in command, you will be obeyed. Amen. When you lift your hands up in prayers, in requests, it shall be met. You shall become victorious in your environment because the glory of God now surrounds you and will attract to you all the goodness of God in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. We thank you, Father, because it is done. Lord, these ones have come forward to honor your covenant with them, the covenant of your glory, that your glory will not depart from them anymore. 
because you clothe them with strength today and that glory will abide with them that glory will be a strength unto them the light of god will shine around them by reason of the glory and wherever they go they will adequately represent you because you are there to represent yourself in their lives and to perform all that needs to be performed for them by them and through them we pray with thanksgiving to god in jesus mighty name in jesus mighty name in jesus mighty name amen and amen hallelujah god bless you amen amen Hallelujah. Give glory to the Almighty God for the abundance of His blessings upon us today. We will take a prayer for our sister, Sister Chika Chikwendu, who is going to hit the Jubilee milestone tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Chika Chikwendu and the family, please come forward. Glory to God. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Behold a troop. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, brethren. Sorry, she's not here. They went for a visit with uh, mommy Edith. So we are going to stand in for her. Um, we thank God for this occasion. We bless God for his mercies. This is Jubilee for her. And <laughs> hallelujah. And we believe it's Jubilee indeed for all of us as a family. Amen. We believe that the Lord is calling us to come up here. And we believe. It is a call that we all have to obey and come up here despite the numerous rumblings and shakings and tumblings and all that the Lord wants us to overcome to come up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we covet your prayers for her and for us, the children. Chibudom, Tochuku, Chizurum, Mzopta. And Chiagosium. I'm deliberately calling them one by one. Praise the Lord. We all are going to experience the Jubilee. And Sebastian, myself, praise the Lord. We all are going to experience the Jubilee in this new year of my wife. She has been a great support for us. Um, sorry I'm taking your time, but um, permit me to just say this. She has been a great support for me. Then for the children, I couldn't hold back tears when they were praying for her this morning. I was wondering, I said, so all these things you people were doing, and you know that she, she was a great support, and we appreciate her. We pray that the Lord will strengthen her. We pray that the Lord will indeed make it a jubilee for her. We pray that she will see a higher realm in God that she has never seen before. We pray that she will, she, will, she will fulfill the calling of God, not just by letter, but by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Glory be to God. We will call on Uncle Kola to bless this family. I believe um, he is the father of this family. Praise the Lord. Amen. The other elders may please join. Praise God. Can we stretch forth our hands towards them? Thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you praise. You are not a God of coincidence. You are a God that is always available. You are always available, and we have seen your mighty hand upon this family. Lord, we thank you for your daughter, Chica. Lord, we thank you because you have preserved her. Yes, your preservation has been over her. Times when the enemy threatened her life, but you came like a mighty warrior to defend her. Thank you for this 50 years sojourn on earth. Lord, we are joining the family to say thank you. Because not only has she been a blessing to the family, she has been a blessing to the church of God. That even today, she's on another mission to bless some people. Lord, we are saying thank you. Lord, this assembly rejoices with this family and we ask. Because when we ask you, you will give to us. We are asking God that your name shall be upon your daughter. Amen. That your hand shall rest upon her. Amen. We are asking for a new and a fresh beginning. Because we have so many beginnings in you. Let this be another beginning for Chica. Amen. A beginning that is superior to other beginnings. Now, Lord, open a new door unto her. Amen. A new door in the things of the Spirit. Yes, we know she, she loves you and she thirsts after you. Father, we are asking that you open this new door unto her. Whereby she will enter into fresh encounters with you. There are several things in her heart to do. But we are with her. It's not sufficient. We are asking today. That by this door you open unto her, she will receive grace. And this grace, let it be accompanied with glory. Amen. You've spoken to us today about this cupboard. Father, because where your glory is present, it is known. Therefore, we declare to you, Chica, daughter of Zion, the presence of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, the glory of the Lord opens unto you afresh Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. That innermost desire and expectation you have of God, by this fresh and new open door, enter into the storehouse of provision Amen. and to partake of all that you need to accomplish it in Jesus' name. Lord, let's your hand rest upon her in sound health. Let her health be as bright as the noonday. Lord, we have learned that we do not order our lives according to the reckonings of men. Because according to the reckonings of men, when a lady turns 50, there are so many do's and don'ts. But we use the blood of Jesus to wipe away those handwritings. Amen from her heavens and from her life. We say, rather, a new lease of life from the ball, from the presence of the Father, shall rest upon you. You will not be sick. 
In the name of Jesus, you will not run into any crisis. Chica, we declare you will stay alive with your husband to take over these children and also to watch over their own children. The Lord has granted you the grace of motherhood. The Lord shall bestow upon you the grace of grandmotherhood. Amen. Whereby you will see your children's children. And with joy, you will carry your grandchildren Amen. with your husband along with you. Amen. I proclaim today, no one in this family shall be missing. Amen. There shall be no mishap. There shall be no accident of life. Things that happen, we say, oh, it, was, it just came. Nothing negative will come. Amen. Father, you have protected them these many years. They go to school. They are alone. They, they, they move in the midst of wolves. They move around people, children that have been dedicated to Satan. But Father, let your mark remain upon these children. Amen. Let the devourer never enter this family. Amen. Now, Lord, we are asking, bless them even in material things. Amen. Lord, what is required to raise up these children, even materially, to a level whereby the heart of your son and your daughter will be at rest. Release it unto them. Amen. And Lord, we declare to these children, they shall find their place in the house. Amen. In these days when you are picking children by the locks of their hair, you will have something to hold on to in their lives. Amen. All that they hear and partake of in this house, they shall make good use of them. Amen. They shall be exemplary children. They shall be children that hold on to God even when their colleagues and mates are letting down on God. Lord, release your blessing and fresh upon them. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I'm particularly, it's coming to my heart that God should give you a surprise in your family. I don't know what it is. Endi kandi abokai amadi kalika. Okanda ya boda, melirando malikai bibidi, kianto ya boka salabadaya. Nakori emile kandua baka salarika. What is in your heart, Father? Because as you drop this in my heart to pray it, Father, I ask in simple faith and obedience, bring a surprise to this family. I don't know the character of the surprise, but something that they will know is a gift from you that will encourage them and will strengthen them to follow you the more let it come let it, come. Let it be their portion Amen. and let it make them rejoice Amen. this church rejoices with you Amen. we will never weep over you Amen. so let it be Amen. in jesus christ's name Amen. hallelujah congratulations amen Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We will also take a prayer for the family of the Audus. The Audu family, please can you come forward very quickly? Uh, last week was their father's burial. And um, there are indications that uh, they will need to be prayed for. So we'll call on we'll call on Uncle Richard to please take this prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, we are here to say thank you for your prayers, for your support, you know, given to us, towards the burial of our father. We went to Benin. We saw, we fought, and we conquered. Amen. That is the summary of our testimony. Thank you. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Please stretch your hands towards them. I know what it means to face arrows, especially during burials. I'll pray for them and then I'll make a statement as a lesson for many of us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Stephen and Augustina Aldo. Lord, they had gone to bury Papa and there were many crossfires, oppositions, the enemy seeking to entrench themselves or the works of ancestral forces around them. In the name of Jesus, huh? I saw that there was a personality that came following our daughter here from that burial. As I wanted to start praying, you notice I paused about two times. I just saw something came up and I had to look. I thought somebody was coming to tell me something. We disconnect you from that personality. We say you will have no link anymore to Augustina or any of, his, of her children or to her brother, her husband, Stephen. You will have no link, association, or contact with them from now and henceforth. We banish you from their lives in the name of Jesus. Whatever was thrown at you, seeking to hold you down to the ancestry and to the family, we say that those chains are broken. Amen. Those ties are destroyed. Amen. Whatever was taken from you in the cause of this burial, we command a recovery. We command it to be recovered to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We say the Lord will return to you all that the canker worms ate and the years that the caterpillars ate. The Lord will restore them to you abundantly in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Not a burn from these burial processes will be found on you or your children. Your hair will not be singed by it. Not even the smell of it shall be found around you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We bless you. We declare that you are free of all their evil expectations. You are set at liberty to do the will of God alone. The church bless you. The church strengthen you. The church replenished to you that which you lost, which went from you, because the Lord is restoring them to you. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For the benefit of those who were not in fellowship last Sunday, we dedicated this book written by one of our elders, Uncle Iguse. Uh, the title is Living in the Atmosphere of Divine Blessings. Every family is entitled to a copy, uh, but I think today we can still allow families to take one or two more because we still have uh, quite a number of copies there. So if you need more of it, you may take at least two more for now. Praise the Lord. And those who have not gotten before, you can take a copy. But we will want everyone who picks a copy to please read the book. If you know you will not be able to read it, you may not need to take it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And if you want to gift it to somebody 
you are free to take one. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And to the glory of God, we are dedicating another book today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This book is titled, The Reality of Hellfire. The Reality of Hellfire. A Testimony by Brother Emeka Emesiani. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we'll call our brother to please come forward while um, Uncle Ben. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uncle Ben is a lover of books. He's a reader. Praise the Lord. So we'll still ask him to still dedicate this also. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know if our brother, Emeka, has uh, one or two things to say uh, before we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, <laughs> I just want to thank God for the privilege and the grace that um, he gave to, you know, express this experience that I had, you know, with the Lord very long time ago. And um, I will not pause because the, the detail is contained in the book. But it was a dealing that I had, you know, um, back in the campus. And that was how the Lord brought me into this, this way, you know, into this work. And, um, you know, far back then, there was a very clear impression in my spirit that this is the purpose, you know, for which the Lord was bringing me, you know, forth. And that there's a need um, to herald the message that the Lord gave me at that time. The urgency was, you know, quite clear in the spirit. You know, so, but uh, for so many years, I was not able to, you know, document it. And of recent, the Spirit of the Lord began to remind me in a very definite way that it is time that the Lord would have this experience, you know, be put forth in a, in a book form, you know, such that it will be able to get across to as many as the Lord would have it, you know. And that was what informed this. And by the grace of the Lord, the Lord was able to arrange you know the modalities and today to the glory of god we have the the book so it's basically a book that uh, would help you know to reach out to the world reach out to sinners to unbelievers you know to emphasize the reality of health because the experience was that of you know experiencing what hell it's all about and the mercy the Lord showed me to bring me back. You know, and so that's just in a summary what the book is all about. So it's for outreach. You know, we uh, encourage to reach out to as many um, unbelievers and uh, that the Lord would have to hear this message and know that hell is real and it's not a joke. I mean, the Lord show us his mercy in Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brian Maker has done my work. I made it very, very easy by telling you what the book is all about. So we leave the reading to you so that you can benefit. But before I pray, one thing that is sure, uh, looking at Emeka since I came to Abuja, I've seen a whole lot of transformation. Uh, Emeka, Brian Maker has grown you know, very, very visibly. The depth of spirituality is amazing, and God also has lifted me up. I, I'm sure people will not know you work with EFCC, you know, in the other life. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So it's a family that I know that God has helped, and God is, we continue to help them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. One key thing is that when you have the hand of God upon your head, don't shake yourself loose from it. Because what God has said he will do, he certainly will do. When God's hand is upon you, the only thing you just do is let his revelation flow forth 
and you follow that footsteps, you will find that whichever way it is, there is no power that can withstand when you, when God is with you. That's one thing I know. That's what I know has been demonstrated in my life. That's what I also know when somebody tells you my personal experience of her, I've come out victorious. May the Lord help us and may we find the spirit of obedience in all that we do in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that Brian Maker will be able to write much more. Apart from this personal experience, this one person I know that he loves God, he prays a lot. Maybe you should also do a compendium on how to pray, you know, and so many other things that God has opened your, you to through personal dealings and experiences with him. Lord, we ask that you will breathe upon our brother and his family, his lovely family. And Lord, that having taken him, you said he took David from the ship's coat. Having taken him from that little place, you have elevated him. Let his children, O oh God, have him as a starting point. And let them grow into you. In the name of Jesus. These are just the beginnings because there is so much that you have to do. We pray that our brother shall not slack, O oh Lord God. Amen. When you call him, he will answer. Amen. When you call the wife, she will answer. Amen. Let the bond between them grow from strength to strength. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for the book, Father, we dedicate it unto you that every man who reads it will have a touch of God. Amen. We have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This morning we're just praying that, look, when you break an atmosphere, you pulverize it with prayer. Anyone that flows into it knows what, what is called a capitation. It doesn't require any effort anymore in order to be able to go to God's grace because of the work that others have done. Let that be their experience. For those who will read this book, that they will have that touch that light that we move them oh god from their miry clays from their pits from their earth to the presence of the lord in the name of jesus we thank you father for this book we launch it and we dedicate it in your name to the praise and glory of your name oh god in jesus name we have prayed amen and god bless you brother maker yeah may god grant you strength to do more amen Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. So we have a um, good quantity of this book on ground. If you need, at least everyone can have one. And in case you need to share with other people, it's good for evangelism. Uh, let the people out there know that hell is real. Praise the Lord. So if you need to use for evangelism, you can take more copies. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So after fellowship, let's just move towards the ushers um, stand there. Amen. Hallelujah. Announcement. The Northern Region Conference is ongoing. And we are advised to hook up online and follow through to the end of the conference. I think the conference ends today. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All the youths in the house will be having an important meeting after fellowship. This meeting will also include the young adults. So all the youths and young adults in the house should please wait after fellowship for a very important meeting. You may just move towards the my hall where uh, the meeting we hold. Praise God. Amen. Last week we announced from the ushering team for parents to always accompany their children to the restrooms. We don't want children going there all alone. Of course, we know this is a public place. And we still have other people. Amen. There is food 
in the food bank for sharing today. I, I, I thought you wanted to clap. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. So, um, Sister Christy will be giving out the food after fellowship. Let's just uh, move towards her. Amen. Sorry? Uh, she should be back before we... Yeah, they went for an outreach along with our sister, Chica, and the rest of them. She should be back. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have been announcing the funeral arrangements for our late mommy, Joanna Ikani. And um, the burial is this week, starting from Thursday, the 4th of April, when we will have the service of songs. The time is, is it 2 or 4 p.m.? 2, 4 p.m., okay? So the time is 4 p.m., the venue is here in Top Rank Hotel Galaxy. And um, on the 5th, there will be a line in state and a crusade in her former residence in Karu. The time for the line in state will be 12 noon and the crusade will be for 4 p.m. Everyone is enjoined to be present at each of the events. Praise the Lord. And on Saturday, there will be a funeral service at 11 a.m. And reception will follow afterwards here in Top Rank Hotel Galaxy. And on Sunday, by the grace of God, there shall be a thanksgiving our service. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We have also fixed for this week the burial of our brother's mom. That is brother Chikiri Ohoka, whose mom's body will be laid to rest in Omuanechi local government of Abia State on Saturday the 6th of April. That is this week. Also, we have ahead the burial of um, Madam, Madam Mary Odiete, the mother-in-law to her brother Benson Ibinosa. The burial Friday the 19th of April all through to Sunday the 21st. On Friday there shall be service of songs. Saturday is the interment service and reception and Sunday for thanksgiving service. Let us pray along with our brethren and um, also call to condole with them. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. We want to welcome those who are worshipping with us for the first time today. Today is your first time worshipping with us. We want to welcome you very specially. We would like you to please stand wherever you are. Can you please stand? Today is your first time worshipping with us. Please stand. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. You are welcome in Jesus' name. A microphone will be given to you. You will tell us your name. Uh, you tell us where you are from. If you are here on invitation, you let us know who invited you. Amen. Church, praise the Lord. Amen. 
Okay, my name is Franklin Odika. I'm from Anambra State. I live in Trademore, Lube, Voice of Nigeria Junction. Okay, I was invited by Son Tochiku Okonkwo. Okay. God bless you. Welcome in Jesus' name. Church, praise the Lord. Amen. My name is Samuel. I'm staying in Lube. From uh, I stay with uh, Brother Ben. I'm Amen. daddy here, Brother Ben. Amen. God bless you. Welcome. My name's uh, Jeremiah. My name's uh, Jeremy. Okay. My name's uh, Jeremiah Ithuaga. I'm from Lagos, from Bini As Fellowship. God bless you. Welcome in Jesus' name. So please, uh, we are glad to have you. After we close, we will need you to come to the front row, to my left. Some of our brethren will meet with you very briefly. God bless you for coming in Jesus' name. You may have your seats. We will also welcome our long timers. We have in the house David and Devina Kachi. God bless you. Good to see you again. Amen. Sister Akiwande and Oyinye in church this morning. To God. Amen. The Agabo household is in church this morning. That is Brother Tefa's family. Glory to God. Brother Victor Akukuma, God bless you. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Sister Patricia and the ladies, you are welcome in Jesus' name. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Sister Shaji and the children, you are welcome in Jesus' name. Sister Yetunde, welcome. God bless you in Jesus' name. Brother Ulubenga Afolabi, good to see you. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Welcome the next person to you. Welcome them in case I've missed somebody. Welcome your wife now, brother. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. We give praise to God and uh, Sister Mercy, right? Mercy, you are welcome to the technical table in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, even Esther, you are new here. God bless you. You are welcome in Jesus' name. No wonder everything was just going smoother than before. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. As I was trying to keep this, but I kept having a strong nudge to say what I want to say. And um, it's good to use available location to pass across what will benefit us and the church. Now, we dedicated two books today. And we've been told to go and collect what we want. Well, before these two books were brought forth, I had the privilege of having the scripts and looking at them. And um, a lot of effort was done. I want to make a proposal. You see, because you are a bookseller, or I don't know whether you still do, okay, you know what happens. You know how books, how much books are sold. Okay. I know we have the best of intent. I've written several books also, so I'm not talking without experience. We don't put charge on our books for discipline's sake. Not that it is wrong. Do you understand? It is not wrong to put a price on books. But for discipline's sake, and because of the heart of giving, we don't. But I will expect that at least some persons once in a while will take a step further. Some people will say, you don't sell the gift of God. You don't. But you can encourage the people who have taken a bold step. You may not know how long it has taken 
to write this. I think I received the script of this thing about four months ago, five months ago. And a lot has gone into bringing it, corrections and all that to bring it forth. And beside that, it was, it was, money was spent in bringing it forth. Later on, by the grace of God, I intend to give, bring forth a teaching on New Testament pattern of giving. You see, there's a pattern of giving in the New Testament. And one of the aspects of giving is to bless those that bless us. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay. I know there are some people who will receive these books. You see, if you start this one after fellowship, you can finish it before you sleep. It's possible. And if you start this one, it's possible to finish it by tomorrow morning. Now, some of us bury our heads in material, book materials that really don't mean much to us. And one of the ways of appreciating even the grace of God, there is, I will come to that, not today. There is a biblical principle of appreciating the grace of God. And the people who have written this didn't send me a message. But I kept having a nudge that we should, even if the people are not asking, even if they don't want to take, eh, let's contribute, let's make up. I'm not saying everybody who collects this will give. But I believe that there are some persons that the Lord will speak to. Like this one particularly is very good for outreach. Do you understand? Now, if, for example, you, the Lord can minister to you and say, Brother Maker, I've gone through this book. Can I pay for 1,000 copies? And I will send it around to schools. He had the experience as a student. If you read the book, you know, it, was, it was very terrifying to him. Now, there are many people who don't even believe in hellfire. There are people that are living their lives anyhow. You can say, Brother Mika, please, I'm not, I know you are not selling it, but can I, can I make an impute? You understand? Even if you know he won't want to, meet somebody around that can get across to him. Well, at times, eh, when you get to a restaurant, sometimes you don't pay until you have eaten. So, you may wish to read it first. I'm not saying you must pay, but definitely you can't go to any bookstore and pick a book. I want us to encourage those that labor. I know what it takes to labor in writing books, in editing books, in bringing it out. And this one, the atmosphere of divine blessing, I've also had the privilege of going, having it before it came out. And I believe it will be a blessing to quite a number of people who are struggling with certain things at this stage of their lives. I mean, Bless the people that have written. Am I saying something that is reasonable? Praise the name of the Lord. You see, the Bible says it is more blessed to what? Give than to receive. And when you give, an aspect of Christian discipline, an aspect of New Testament pattern of discipline is to give to those who what? Bless us. You may not know how far it will go. And I want to say, there are even some of the people that will not even want to. The fact that somebody has a good car, has a big house, does not mean that you don't give, even if the person is not asking. There are some principles we look at later on. You know? But I just want us to start something. Even if you don't want to move near any of them, but the Alumi Day is here. He knows about books and what it takes. Just meet him or meet any of the people. And say, please, can I make an input? I just want to contribute to buying five of the books. And I want to give to some people. That's the first one. Then the second aspect is this. Brother Mide, these books, I have a strong word. They should get to the bookstores. Because, because some of these books are not just meant for, how many of us are here? It's not meant for those of us that are just here. The books we write... You see, I read, I read also. And I know that, I won't say it's all junks. But I've been to bookstores. There is this bookstore I normally go in, Luke, in, uh, I think it's in Huse. If you get 
there are so many books, so many things that are written, tapes, messages. But I can testify that some of them don't even have as much resource as some of these. We should even do, I don't know if some of our young adults can do it for us, get to some of these bookstores. The books can be given Do you understand? But if you go to a bookstore, because this, there are people who read, who will never come across these books, except they get to the bookstore. So if you get to the bookstore, you can just say, I want to give these 1,000 copies to you, you know, and sell. They won't even collect it. Because the world has learned to place value on what they pay for. So, there can be an argument where some people will take these books, you have looked at it, it has made the standard, and please, if you are doing, make it standard. Okay, I can see that this one has ISBN, it's been in the National Library, because that's one of the recommendations. Now, take it down. Put a price on it. Not because you want to make merchandise of the game, but because of the people, you, your aim is to get it out. Somebody met, I got in touch with somebody some time ago, and I was told that the person gets books on Amazon. Some of these books, soft copy, you get to, I was trying to buy one book on Amazon some time ago. I think it was about 20 something dollars or so for just a soft copy. And there are people that are buying them. I buy books on on, on Amazon. You understand? So, and even when you give to it, it can help to produce more. So, one, two things I've said today. One, let's see how we can encourage and bless and assist in reproduction of books. That's number one. Then the second thing is, let's see to how some of these things can go out beyond the walls of this place. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Now, um, you know, we mentioned the burial for Mommy Joanna Ikani. And some people may not know her by name. But I don't think there is anybody who has been with us that will not know who she is. This is her picture. That is... Sister Ronke's mom. Sister Ronke, please, can you please stand? Uh, that is Sister Ronke's mom. Uh, she has been a resource in the house. She has indeed been a mother in the house, doing ministry quietly. She has ministered to a whole lot of us, quietly. Praise the Lord. So we have to know that this burial is our program. And every one of us should endeavor to be in this burial service. Praise the Lord. So please let us note the date and time and as much as possible be there. And be there early because we are going to be having guests from outside here. And we are hosting them, so to say. Praise the Lord. So please, young people, I want to... That is one of the reasons why you are calling for a meeting, uh, so that we can prepare to, you know, handle these services. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Shall we rise? Let us remember we have offering boxes in the house where we could drop our offerings. The offerings can be dropped in any of the two boxes. There is one in front. There is another one by the door. And displayed on the screen, as you can see, uh, account details that we could use for electronic transfers. The Lord bless and prosper the works of our hands in Jesus' name. Uh, and for the gifts to the authors of some of these books, if you don't want to be seen or known, you can put them in an envelope, indicate on the, on the envelope to Brother Iguse, to Brother Emeka for the book, and you can drop them in any of the 
offering boxes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let us give praise to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God for another time of fellowship. Every opportunity we have to be in fellowship with one another in the presence of God is indeed an opportunity. It's a privilege. And we cannot take it for granted. Let us so give thanks unto the Lord for counting us worthy to be in fellowship today. We planned to be here and we made it. We have had fellowship with ourselves. We have had fellowship with the word of God, with the spirit of God, with the person of God himself, with our Lord Jesus Christ. It's such a wonderful privilege. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. That is all that we can give to God. That is all that we have to give to God. Let us tell him thank you for enabling us to come and fellowship. Let us thank God for this Northern Region Conference that has been on since Thursday. And not only in the north, we have the Western Region Conference, we have the Eastern Region Conference all going on simultaneously. And they have really been times of refreshing. They have really been times of abundance of the blessings of God. We believe that this work shall not remain the same after this weekend. We believe that our lives, our families shall not remain the same after this weekend. And so let us give thanks to the Lord for so much that he is doing this weekend. Let us pray that the Lord will perfect that which he has set in his heart to do this weekend by these conferences in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray for the vessels of ministry that God has been using. Since Thursday, brethren have been running up and down. Brethren have been, you know, everywhere putting things together. There are brethren that you won't even see them, but they are very up and doing. Let us pray that the Lord will renew their strength. Let us pray that the Lord will refresh them. There are many of them that don't even have time to sit down and listen to the word. Let us pray that they will not miss anything. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray a lot of funds have gone into these conferences. God has used men and women to contribute. Even children have contributed into this. Let us pray that no one will lose their reward. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray for the journeys of our brethren back to their various destinations. Those who have traveled to the east, to the north, to the south, to the west. Let's pray that the Lord will take our brethren back home safely. Everyone will get to their homes in safety. They will not have any difficulties on the way. There shall be no accidents. There shall be no kidnappings. There shall be no abductions. Our brethren will get to their homes in safety. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the blessings of this conference shall remain with us. All the days of our lives, in the name of Jesus, we commit the remaining part of the conference on, into the hands of the Lord. Let the Lord take full and absolute control, in the name of Jesus. Father, we are grateful unto you. Let us pray for the new week that we are going into. Many of our brethren, some traveling out, some traveling back to town, let's ask for safety, that the Lord will keep our brethren safe. Their journeys shall be safe in the name of Jesus. Let us pray that the Lord will go ahead of us into this new work, working week. And he will bless and prosper all our endeavors. The Lord will bless and prosper all the works of our hands. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory. Let's pray for the children who are on holiday. That the Lord will be with them. No evil shall befall any one of them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we are grateful. We give you all praise. We worship you. We exalt. We magnify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We pray also for the forthcoming event, the burial of Mommy Ikani. Lord, we pray that you will take absolute charge. We pray, O oh Lord, that every activity shall be covered under the shadow of your wings. In the name of Jesus. 
we decree and declare safety in the name of Jesus Christ. Safety for all travelers, safety for all the activities in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that the activities shall be smooth and successful in the name of Jesus. We pray for strength for the family members. We pray for comfort for their hearts in the name of Jesus. And for our brother Chikere also, we ask, oh God, that you be with him. We pray that you strengthen him. We pray that every traveler shall travel safely and return safely in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory and praise.